Hi, this is Mr. Carlberg. I am going to attempt to create a little video that explains how we can create wheels for our mouse trap race cars that fit a little bit more snug than our CDs. So, we can make wheels that look like this, that look like this, or some variation of them using a flat piece of what's called acrylic, almost like plexiglass, uh, a sheet like this. So, here's how it's done. First thing we're going to use is a computer program called Corel Draw. It's a little green icon located here, or also could be located down here on your home bar. Okay. So let's open Corel Draw and begin to create these wheels. As you know, it will take a second. Okay. So we are here. First thing we need to do is go to File, New. Okay. You want to give your wheels a name, and as I've spoken to you in class, you want to create the name for your document that is specific to you. If your name is Joe and Steve, maybe you want to call it JS Wheels. Okay, uh, that's about it, all we need right now. So let's hit OK, and you will see a screen come up like this. Now there's a couple things you need to pay attention or do to maximize your capabilities and make this as easy as possible for eventually printing to the laser cutter. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take your cursor up to this little um, X and Y axis and drag it so that you have it directly in the top left hand corner. As you see now, up at the top, you have your location at zero. If I was to draw a straight line, it will be right smack dab at that corner. Similarly, horizontally, right smack dab at zero. This is your home point. Okay. Next thing that we need to do is worry about how wide and how tall our piece of acrylic, our piece of wood, our file folder, whatever it is we are going to cut on the laser cutter. Uh, we have to make sure the dimensions are correct. Now the easiest way to measure how wide and how tall your piece of acrylic in this instance is is to come over to the laser cutter and use the roller that they have for you. So right now if I was to put this piece of acrylic in you should be able to see that up at the top we have a piece of acrylic that is going from 0 to 10 inches. So our width would be 10 inches. That's going horizontally. Now, going vertically up and down, the same thing, going from 0 to 8 inches. So our piece of acrylic is 10 by 8. We must go back to our We must go back to our Corel draw and make sure that we have our width set at 10 inches and our height set at 8 inches, what we just measured. Okay, and you could see that still we're still located at zero, 0, If that's not the case, then now it changed a bit. You simply take that cursor and drag to the top left corner. Now we can see we're at zero, 0. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do ideally is just make a circle. Um, obviously, we're using a wheel. So what we can do is grab this ellipse tool. Okay. As you see, draw circles and ellipses. We obviously want to do a circle perfectly round like a car tire would be, like a bicycle wheel would be, anything of that sort. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on that, come over to my screen, and as you can see, the cursor turns into a little circle. All right. Now maybe I want this circle to be that wide. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. What we can see back up here is that we have a circle that is 4.594 inches wide and 4.022 inches tall. We must, must, must have these match up in order for us to have a perfect circle that will go smoothly across our carpet, across our hallway floor. So I'm just going to make this nice round numbers of 4 inches wide, 4 inches tall. And as you can see, this right here looks much more like a perfect circle. Okay? So that will handle the outside circle. But as you know, 
We need to stick a pen through the inside little circle so that it fits perfectly, it fits snugly, unlike the CDs. So we need to grab the ellipse tool again and create another small little circle. Now, this is where you're going to have to do some investigating. You guys are going to have to determine how wide, how tall this circle inside here should be. Right now, here are the dimensions. You want to measure the width of the pen as accurately as possible and have the same width of this circle. Now, I want to have this circle placed inside this circle so I can do a couple of things. Ideally, what you want to do as easily as possible is come up, click on your pick tool, that's a little arrow, so that we can come back to our circle and see how it can be easily moved. We want to move it to the center of this circle. Now as you get closer and closer and closer to the center of this circle, you will see that happen. Where right now if I was to place that circle, we can see that it is in the center of the larger outside circle. Okay, So right now we have something that is remotely resembling a wheel. Okay. So let's just say that Joe and Steve is, have decided that this is the accurate wheel that they want to cut out of the acrylic. This is what they want their wheel size to be. Okay, so I'm still on this pick tool right here. What I need to do is highlight them both and come up here and right click with your mouse. Right click with your mouse so that we have selected group objects. The reason we want to go to group objects is because now anywhere I would move these circles you see that that inner circle stays directly in the center of the outer circle. They are grouped together. They are locked in place. If they were not grouped together there would not be synchronous movement. Okay. So right now, this wheel is perfectly created. Okay, What I want to do next is click on both wheels so that they are highlighted and come down right to here to this almost looks like two hands praying, almost looks like a pen going into a jar of ink. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but this is what we need to click on. So let's double click on it. Okay. We need to make sure our width is selected to hairline. Hairline will allow us to cut objects out rather than to just simply engrave different objects on them. You can engrave or you can cut. We want to make sure we are cutting so that the wheels obviously come out of the larger piece of acrylic. Okay, so let's do that making sure we're clicked on hairline. So I hit OK. And right now I should have everything required so that we can print. Now when we print, this is similar to printing from Microsoft Word, this is similar to printing from your computer. With a couple variations obviously because we're using a laser cutter rather than a typical printer. So what I want to do next, come up to File, Print, Make sure my printer is selected as Epilogue Engraver. That is the name of this laser cutter. I make sure that's clicked on. Now I need to go to Preferences. Preferences is huge. Make sure you go to this so we are not wasting acrylic. Preferences. A couple things need to happen here. Okay. First thing, I need to have my autofocus clicked on. Okay. Now, next big thing is I need to have my piece size selected. These are the exact same dimensions horizontally and vertically as you have right up here. The same dimensions as the piece of wood, piece of acrylic, file folder, whatever you're using, those are the, those are the same dimensions. So right now we're using the acrylic, so it's 10 inches wide horizontally, 8 inches tall vertically. Okay. Now, Raster and vector. These are fancy words for cutting and engraving. If you see this chart 
on our wall over here. We have what we want to do vector. That's a fancy word for cutting. Okay? Um, this is where you want to focus on because we are going to do cutting. If you were in another class doing engraving, you would want to worry about one of these columns, primarily this one because we have a laser cutter that uses this 600 DPI. Okay. Now, as I said, we are using a piece of acrylic. So right now I want to use a piece of acrylic and cut it. So we're right in here. Now these dimensions, 12, 100, 500, 8, 100, 500, that's based on speed, power, and frequency. What we are going to use every single time is 12, 100, excuse me, 5,000. I apologize, 5,000, not 500. So 12, 100, 5,000, we're going to be vectoring. So let's go back to our Corel Draw. And we want to make sure we have vector selected. Again, that's for cutting. And you'll notice that this is grayed out. I cannot select anything here. I can move this every direction. I can move this every direction. But this down here is only for vectoring, only for cutting. And as I said, based on that chart, we want to have selected 12, 100, and 5,000. 12, 100, 5,000. Once we hit OK, we should be able to print. Now with that being said, it's always good to double and triple check that we have our autofocus clicked on vector for cutting. Our dimensions correct. 10 inches wide, 8 inches tall. 10 inches wide, 8 inches tall. And we have these settings correct. If we do not have these settings correct, based on what we are cutting into, there could start some type of fire. There could be some type of nasty smell. There could be some type of, simply put, errors happening. So we need to make sure we have 12, 100, 5,000 set on. I'm just going to go back over and double check. 12, 100, 5,000. That's good to go. So we hit OK. We have our engraver selected. That's good. We hit OK. After that happens, the image that you have here is going to be sent to here. When all of that is ready to go, and you have made sure that you have everything correct on Corel Draw. This is where you can talk to Mr. Carlberg, see if he has enough confidence in you to actually press go, to actually make sure you have your correct piece of acrylic, to make sure you have your correct program ready to print. If that is okay, he may give you the green light, but it is always important. Once you are done here on the computer with Corel Draw, that you come and talk to him about actually putting your piece of acrylic in the correct location. Everything that needs to be turned on in the back room is turned on. You just need to double check with him. So guys, that's Corel Draw in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please ask me. If you have any trouble, please ask me as well. But hopefully that was a nice introduction for you. Thanks guys.